In this video, I will show you the basics of stamp it. I advise you to start with a simple object. I will create a sphere. Add a bit more of subdivision, not too much, just something like that. Uh, always good to freeze your transform or the classical Maya things. Okay, and now I can stamp. How it works? Stamps works on face mode. Okay, you need to select an area, then you will double click to create your stamp. You don't need to have UV uh, for stamp it to rocks. So just made a selection and go to one stamp you want and double click. Here you will have a running pop-up that say you uh, there is something wrong. You should confirm this mesh first. Why? Before to use any stamp on a mesh, you need to confirm it. What is confirm? Confirm is just prepare if you want the, the mesh to work with stamp it. It's really simple for you. It's just one click on this first button. So yes, you need to confirm first. So yeah, I'm confirm works as um, object mode. So I select it and confirm. So here your computer will compute a few seconds and now it's OK. Nothing more. Now I can go to a face mode selection and double click here same thing you have a little warning but don't worry about that some second and your stamp is here when you create a stamp it will select a little locator here you can place where you want um, why there is this locator because if i select my sphere i s i saw with a um, wireframe it's not geometry okay it's a difference between plug it for example uh, is that here we are dealing with texture and as you know we can't select uh, texture di directly on our mesh so it's why i create this little uh, what i call um, a controller okay to have access to uh, setting editing option on each uh, stamp uh, this will not be uh, visible at rendering or anything, so it's just a, a little controller to have access to, to your stamp. For a better result, I advise you also to, um, to add some light. I give you one preset here on this icon. You just click here and that will import an Azure. Nothing happened because of course you need to turn on the viewport lighting and shadow also. Yes, and now you, we have a better lighting rendering. Well, we can create one more stamp. I will come here, one bigger one. Uh, let's create uh, this one. And boom, it's created. Now, I want to edit a bit this stamp. You see, it's not perfectly aligned. Uh, so I will come go to the controller and First, you have the second tool here, which is a placement tool. You click on it and you will be able with this manipulator to uh, edit your stamp. If you look, I will come here and it will disappear. Why? Because the stamp will only be applied and uh, display on the area you selected um, at the creation. So it's why it's important. Uh, to um, perform a selection based on the scale and the place you want uh, your stamp to be. So here, OK, come here. You have the, this to, uh, to to move it. With this, you can scale it. So same thing, if you scale too big, it will be hidden. But if you go, you will see too little. Uh, you will have a repetition, OK? so. It's um, you also be uh, should be careful about the area you select selected uh, because you can't uh, after um, set a, li a too too little uh, uh, stamp because you will have repetition this way. Okay, so you you ju just have a little bit of uh, marge but nothing more. And with this little cross, you can click here and you will have a rotation manipulator if you want to rotate. Okay. 
this is for placement. Um, the third one, always um, be sure to have a controller selected. If I click here, nothing happen. Here, nothing happen because I should have a controller selected. Same thing here. You, you will have a warning sometime. You should select one mesh, for example. So I select the mesh and here nothing happen. I need to select the controller I want to edit. That will open a little pop-up window. Okay. And here I can deal with intensity of my controller. Those little dots are for reset the default value. Here to one. Okay. And here you have some uh, transform attributes. So the first time you will click, Maya will need to uh, compute a bit. So just wait two seconds. And after you have uh, access to this value. It's the same thing than uh, interactive manipulator, but uh, with slider. The main difference will be that, uh, in fact, you need to be careful about something. Uh, Stampede works with uh, planar projection, in fact, okay? And if I select my sphere here, I go to the input history, I saw that, in fact, yes, I have history node, uh, the two projection for the two uh, stamps. It's with that I can come here and access to the placement. But if you, uh, when you're modeling, you delete the history of this uh, sphere. I will do, oh, I delete history. So I delete projection. My stamp are still there, but now I can't access to the uh, manipulator. So it's why I create for you this. And with this tool, you still, even uh, after um, history deleted, uh, access to a, a manipulation of your, your stamp, okay? So it's a reason why uh, there is two options. And uh, well, yes, when you, you, you select, you need to reopen the window for uh, have access to the transform of this one. And the last icon is uh, to delete stamp. So of course, as always, you select the controller and you click on delete. and your stamp is uh, correctly removed. Okay. Um, so I will create a new bigger one here and other, mm, yes, this one, great. Uh, you saw when you create the stamp, it will automatically uh, select for you the controller because sometimes you can have the controller inside um, a geometry or hidden. Uh, um, so just offset it a bit for you. You can place for have a better access and visibility of the, the controller. Okay. Uh, then, so you saw that uh, I divide the tool in category. So the first one, as we we just um, saw, are for uh, editing. Here it's for displays, baking, and storage. Uh, we saw the light here. We have this one, which which is just um, turn on or off the display of the controller, the lighting, and this one, uh, which is for control the quality of the sampling subdivision of the stamp. For that, you need to select not the controller but the mesh. Okay, and click on it. A little window will open. Uh, you can turn on or off the displacement. Or oh, turn on, great. Also, uh, displacement preview only works on uh, smooth preview mode. So if I hit one, for example, uh, that will disappear, which is normal. Okay, so you need to be on uh, three on smooth preview mode also. And here you can turn on or off. You have here the quality, the quality of the preview on the viewport, because this 
is not the final result. Okay, it's just a viewport preview of uh, the displacement you will have at rendering. I can come here and control you saw the quality of the displacement. You can't go uh, more than 10. I advise you to don't go uh, too much because when you have a uh, higher value, of course, that will be uh, more complex to calculate for your graphic cards and uh, Maya and that will slow down your process. So yes, if you don't care, a value like one or two can be quite enough for have a great result with um, good performance. So this is for the viewport and here we have for rendering. So with uh, Arnold, I don't uh, put option for other renderer, but uh, you that will work also with a redshift or very, uh, but you need to go to your uh, setting manually. Well, we will launch Arnold IPR. Boom. So here it's pretty fast because my uh, subdivision are really low. Uh, as you know, for Arnold displacement, it's the same uh, same thing. You need to go to subdivision here, and here you control your um, displacement subdivision. So here it's the same thing. It's just some uh, shortcut. For example, here I am wireframe, not really dense. I need to improve this for to have a better uh, displacement subdivision. Of course, the more you have, the better quality of the stamp uh, you will have. Yes, here I will come back to shading, and now I have a better, you see, really fine result of my stamp. So it's you to to find the, the great uh, value. And of course, as you know, you also have auto bump. So be sure to select your mesh and click on auto bump. Sometimes uh, the result will be better. Sometimes it will uh, not be. So it's you to to test and and uh, and look at if you prefer or not the, the result. Is so here is a result with a bigger stamp, and you saw the result is uh, pretty fine, even or non artifice uh, stuff there is just one uh, restriction uh, specific uh, you need to be careful about you can't uh, use more than eight stamp on a single mesh okay so on this sphere I can't uh, put more than eight stamp okay it's a it's a limitation for now so of course on the sphere uh, that will be uh, a problem but on uh, real uh, complex mechanical uh, stuff where you want to just add some details uh, that will be okay i i think uh, this limitation and one last things uh, you can use stamp um, inside other stamp or overlap uh, each other. For example, on this sphere, I can select, choose, um, yes, this triangle. I will click, double click. Okay, so now stamp are overlapping. I will place my controller and I can deal with inside here so this is all about uh, the stamp it basics